if you are asking a question, Ruth and Katie will be coming around with the microphone. If you could use the microphone, um, not just because it enables everybody to hear, but also if somebody's using the hearing loop, they can also hear as well. So, to get this going, I will call upon Sergeant Mark Lamper to give us the, uh, the police view. Good evening, everybody. Um, so if you remember me, I was here last year. I've been here just over a year now. Um, there's been a lot of changes within the police over the last 12 months. We've got a new um, Chief Constable, Olivia Pinkney, and new Crime Commissioner, um, Michael Lane. So we're waiting for their new policing plan to see what they going to change for the future. Um, from a local level, um, our response teams used to be based in, in Fairham have now moved out to Fairham Reach, which is just before the um, KFC on the Gosport Road. So, uh, so that's where they, they respond from sort of 24 hours a day. But the community police are still in Fairham at the moment. Um, throughout the last year, uh, we've had quite a few different action weeks and different things going on. Um, op, op Liberal, which is um, all your doorstep um, fraud and crime and sort of people come along and tell you about they can replace a roof tile and they charge you two or three thousand pounds. We've done a lot of work um, engaging with the vulnerable areas within within Fairham um, and we have worked closely with trading standards to try and bring some of those perpetrators to court um, which we have successfully done and also there's Operation Make Safe at the moment where there's a also, you probably all read in the newspapers about child sex exploitation. Well, we've been working very closely with Farron Borough Council and other partner agencies in sending out um, a package to hotels, takeaways, pubs, taxis, taxi services about how they can identify um, sort of children at risk and how they can report that to us, which has been very successful because part of, or I'll say half of my role really now, is trying to manage risk. With, with children and other vulnerable people, which does take precedence over some of the other, local other issues that other really wants us to sort out. Um, I did do a community, community mapping exercise with all my team, um, and that was to identify the whole of across Fairham District, any um, vulnerable locations, vulnerable people, who lived in the areas, what ethnicities lived in the areas, what, what places of worship we've got, all the, and what significant sites we've got so that um, we've got all that on different spreadsheets everywhere so if anybody from, from another agency or, or within the police service needs to know straight away any sort of any information that they can't readily find we pretty much know now who lives and what goes on within our areas. Uh, the, um, we always set community priorities um, and, the, and the number one priority I've got at the moment um, I don't know whether you've seen um, an increase in the amount of police officers and PCSOs that are patrolling, especially around Fairham Town Centre at the moment, is the homeless and the street drinking issues that we've got going at the moment. Um, we've done a lot of work over the last few weeks. It's, it's, there's been an increase over the last few months where we believe probably um, whether the homeless and street drinkers think it's a soft touch Fairham because all the support they get offered there, but um, we've seen an increase in the numbers. Um, we've done a lot of work with other partnership agencies and volunteer groups, um, the different housing shelters, um, drug and alcohol workers, um, to, to try and um, stop the ongoing issues. We had a meeting with the residents from Home Fair House, which is behind Trinity Church, because a lot of the street drinkers used to go up there caused lots of problems behind Trinity Church. Uh, we listened to all their concerns. We've had the bench removed from behind Trinity Church and the hard standing. Um, over the last three weeks, I've put officers just on dedicated um, foot patrols along, that's just officers and PCSOs, but also working with partnership with Fair and Wild Council and the other workers, going out um, to, to speak and, and obviously to try and move on um, some of the street drinkers. We've, we've put in three community protection notices on individuals, which means if they, if they, if they breach any of the conditions that we've set, um, we can report them for summons, they can protect the court, and I've got two already going to court now. 
Um, we've also set up a section 35, it may not mean nothing to you, but section 35 dispersal notice, which means I can authorise up to 48 hours um, an individual from, from being in a certain location if they're linked to antisocial behaviour. I've done it on three occasions, that's been breached, and on, only two weeks ago someone was arrested for that and they were, they were taken custody and they were dealt with. What else? We, at, at the present time, we're, we're obtaining statements from, from, from residents, from like the people from the post office and, and some of the other um, businesses within Fairham um, on what impact the rough sleepers sleeping outside their property, the begging, and the other antisocial behaviour is having upon their businesses and also their quality of life, especially for the people from Home Fair House. All that ev evidence has been gathered up together um, and we will be looking at, within, within a very, very near future, is trying to apply for a public spaces protection order, um, which is really, again, it's a bit, that's on a complete area, so we can ban certain things happening within an area, whether that's begging, whether that's, that's people sleeping rough on the street, drinking, all sorts of things. So we're doing as much as we possibly can at the moment, and I can encourage you, if you see any issues going on, please report them to us because the more evidence that we get, the more the, the, the obviously resources that I can try and get and try and get funded so we can try and solve the problem. I have spoken to some of the residents from Home Fair House and they have seen a big difference within the last couple of weeks. So hopefully um, I'm not going to ease up on what we do with the individuals and hopefully we can, we can look at um, sorting that issue out. We had a problem a few weeks ago with some travellers that had come in for, from different parts of the area. We worked closely again with Fair and Bar Council with the enforcement um, agencies as well. And we even invoked our Section 61 powers and they were moved on from several sites and eventually we, we managed to um, move them out of, uh, out of fair. And, so, and that was all sort of around the time of Wickham, Wickham Fair. We've done several drug swap warrants um, and also we had a series of burglaries recently, or last few months ago. Um, a male was identified for that and we did get several charges and he was remanded in court for the burglaries. We have seen a, a drop this, this year. Um, I did a sort of six months from, from the beginning year up to now compared with the same time last year and there is a reduction in the amount of theft from motor vehicles that we've had where people have broken into cars and also with burglaries, um, that's dwelling burglaries and non-dwelling burglaries. We're working more closely now with Neighbourhood Watch. They've now moved their offices very close to where my office is. So we're having um, we're seeing them weekly and we're sending out all the information that we can to you via um, Hampshire Alerts. So I don't know whether you all are all signed up to Hampshire Alerts at the moment, but it's a good way of, of finding out what's going on within your area. We will be doing, well we are starting to, we started it last week, but we will be doing as well some more Cyclops um, where we're looking at sort of, a lot of cyclists keep on going through the precinct because um, there is, from certain times of day, you're not allowed to cycle through there. And um, so we're looking at sort of trying to reduce that. And we've also done a few operations on the BRT line where we've had lots of complaints from the bus drivers with, um, with people driving up there, people riding without any lights on their bikes, um, and just generally, and also children throwing stuff off bridges. So we are working closely with the Gosport um, neighbourhood teams and the bus company to do some, some ops where we've been giving out tickets to people as well. Is there any questions? I think somebody could be on West Street. Sorry. For the cyclists who, especially on market day, right. they think they've got the right of way. But well, I think they need to be taught a few lessons. They don't have a right of way cycling, pedestrian only on West Street. Exactly, and that's what I just said. So we are, what we will be doing, it's probably more on market day, we will select on, on which days we're, that we're going to do it. Um, and we will be, because both the PCs and the PCSOs can issue tickets for, for cycling like, other than, than on a road. Mm -hmm. So we can sort that out. For skateboarders as well. I'm not sure we give tickets for them, but I'm sure we could, we could give them some strong words of advice. From Holy Trinity Church to the railway station, right. in the mornings, there is an awful lot of people that cycle on that bit of road. Now, I know it should be a blue sign, 
with a, a walker and a bicycle if if they are allowed to mm. but, but I haven't seen one right. but so I do reprimand them uh, anywhere between quarter past seven and half past eight I go down out there okay and uh, quite a lot then notice between eight and eight thirty when I'm out there right. yes. okay we can look into that as well. thank you uh, I shop at Tesco's, which is immediately opposite your police station. Mm -hmm. There have been a number of times where it would appear that policemen have been carrying guns in Tesco's. Carrying um, guns? Yes. Right, there's... We, in the, police officers are encouraged to go in and, and buy their lunch um, and mingle with the community. <coughs> okay, now, what I... What, if they're an armed response officer, and there are a certain amount of armed response units that float around Hampshire all the time. None are based here, but we have armed response 24-7. Um, if they're carrying a gun and they want to pop in and buy something, they've got probably no capability of, of, of maybe locking their gun up first, or maybe they don't want to. Um, I can't comment on that, I really can't. A lot of officers now are carrying tasers. There's a lot more officers now with, with tasers. Um, and each response unit has, um, which are for the which is based at Fair and Ridge, have, have tasers, which look like guns in a gun oh, holster. Is that the explanation? It could be. It could well be that they are tasers. Now, they won't take them off because they've got a pop-in shop to buy something, because they are, literally, they've got the radio with them. I wouldn't expect them walk in there with a coat covered over because they're off duty. But if they're on duty and they're in full uniform, I wouldn't so expect them to take them. looks very much like a gun. Yeah. You can see the holster. With a taser. Bit. With a taser. Sorry, they have something. Yeah, that's with a taser, um, it looks... It's, it's shaped a bit funny shape, but it looks like a gun, and it's in a triangle, sorry, a triangle type holster. Okay. So that Thank could you. well be that it, it's just, it is a, well, I say just a taser. <laughs> Still there. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else? Raise your hand. Yes, thank you. Um, lots of people said sort of things about cyclists and that. Um, on the other, I'm a cyclist, and one of the things that, uh, um, perhaps we ought to consider is pedestrians walking on the cycle path um, just by your police station. Uh, there's a designated cycle path there, almost impossible to cycle up it simply because of the sheer number of people that are walking on there. So there are two sides of the story, we've got to get on together. Um, perhaps your, your people walk, when they're walking around there could have a word with the pedestrian saying, well, you know, we've got a give and take here. Well, Pretty fair with um, with people, especially on 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 cycling. What I said to my team is if if they do, if they go out say in the high street, I thought in West Street rather, um, you give me a yellow card first. You know, tell them off, tell them what to do it, and then you always take the name and address. If you catch them again, and it's the same with you know with walking. We we get the problem, especially on the bus route, the BRT, where people walk up and down there, which they're not allowed to do, and and we will deal with those accordingly as well. So, again, I'm a cyclist, I like cycling as well, and it is annoying when people do walk in front of you, especially on a cycle route. However, you know, yeah. um, we have to give and take with everything. Can I just make one suggestion on that, please? Hang on. 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 Hang um, due to migration, and uh, I've had uh, cyclists going past me, giving me a hell of a jump because I haven't heard them. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are other people who are actually more mature than I am, and uh, they actually are a little hard of hearing like myself. So I, whenever I'm cycling and I have a pedestrian in front of me, in my opinion, they have right away, and so I notify them, I with a bell or something else, excuse me please, may I get past you? A little bit of courtesy would be very, very appropriate. And I also know of a person who was knocked over by uh, a cyclist, very seriously injured, and it was hit and miss as to whether that person lived. So, uh, to those who actually are cyclists, I'm both. Thank you. One of the things that no one's mentioned tonight, which I'm going to run before you do, um, is obviously I get a lot of complaints about parking. So, yeah, at the end of the day, I get, I get a, lot of, a lot of complaints continuing about parking. Um, we, 
<coughs> there, it's not against the law to park on a pavement. What it is against the law is to obstruct the highway, which includes a pavement. So, and I get a lot of complaints where people can't get their push chairs passed or, or their mobility scooters passed. We are a man about. We will. We will. Um, we will put, put tickets on um, if we feel it appropriate. What I've just done recently with it's in Portchester actually, but it's the same problem wherever you go. Um, is that my PCSOs have just been out and or yeah, just been out and done a leaflet job. So they actually just try and educate um, some of the residents rather than you know just just sort of um, giving them all tickets straight away. It is a problem where we live now, and you know I get problems with speeding, and up we can road I get um, continuing people complaining about the speeding. A lot of our powers have been taken away, although. You know, we still have got a speed gun, and we do take it out, and we do we do do speed checks. Um, so we are fully aware of all your concerns regarding speeding and parking. I've got lots. I'm um, with my staff being reduced all the time. I have to manage risk all the time, and although it's annoying to a lot of people, uh, I have to I have to balance the needs of everybody and and sort of and sort out what I think is the highest priority of risk, and whether that's um, children or adults being vulnerable, or whether it's parking, I have to I have to deal with that accordingly with what resources I've got. Just a quick one then. Uh, as far as parking goes, uh, I'm in Beaconsfield Road. We've got masses of other people living there who have uh, four, five cars, six cars. Um, are you planning on any permits or something? Two days running, I've now been locked into my car park and into my drive, so I haven't been able to get out. And uh, one is a taxi, and she parked in front of me, and I just couldn't get out, and I had to get out. My work is I have to get out to people when emergencies are out. Um, firstly, the, with permits, that would be down to to Harvest or to the council, whoever deals with that. I mean, I am, um, I do have a lot of contact with highways, so if there is a problem and we think that we need highways intervention, um, whether it's sort of to put WLOs down or to whatever they can do, obviously that's that's in their remit, but we will um, go along to the site and we will look at it along with, with themselves and with the normal local councillors will come along as well. Um, yeah, if the vehicle is obstructing you and you can't get out and you need to get out, um, the the policy within the police is that if you if a vehicle is parked across your driveway and you can't get out, we can get it towed. If if the, if the, if you're already out and you want to get in your driveway, we won't touch it. Right. It's three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> well, I, I, you can phone up with um, phone up one hundred and one, um, and obviously that be down to the response from the police that's on duty at that time, and and, and how important it is for you to get out with your car. There's a lot of them who uh, live in the Gospel um, Road. They are also parking in right. parking in that road because it's a cul de sac, very easy parking. We've got one person who has four or five cars and all the trailers as well. They're leaving their trailers on the road as well. Again, it's all occupying the place. Now I'm having to park on the road where somebody else could have actually parked so that I can get out from the emergencies that I'm called out. I think it's probably a question that you could uh, take. Yeah. I can take all those other questions on forward uh, after everybody else, if that's okay. I think I'm going to continue. I can't hear what you're saying. Sorry, I'm um, just saying because we've got other speakers to go through. It's probably a question that you could discuss after everybody else has been through on completion, if that's okay. I'm sure I'm not the only one suffering from the same problem. No, I'm sure you're not. Um, this lady answer that? Yep, certainly. Sorry, I've never been to one before, so I just wanted to ask what the yeah. process is like with the council. Um, I'm down by the Watersmeet area and we're getting a lot of problems again every summer with people camping on the Watersmeet part on the, um, down by the wreck there in the park. Right. They're hiding now within the trees and um, they're camping in there. There's feces, there's, you know, there's a lot of problem down there in the summer. We get it all the time. I just wondered if that was your area or if that's the council area. Do we call you? Do we call the council? Right. Um, the, we, we get this problem. We had it. So this is, this is, just to start my second year here, so last no. summer um, we went through this in the summer. Yeah. We get a lot, especially a lot of the homeless people <coughs> will come out um, and they get they get tents and they go in the middle of the woods or they go in, yes. the, in the gillies, they go other places to do it. Um, 
the council, I've got their enforcement teams, will come out. Um, they will serve notice on them and they will remove them. Um, it's not our job as a police to go and remove them. Um, we will go down and we will engage with them um, and to make sure that, that there's no offence, there's nothing else going on. But it's the council that will... I've got their own enforcement teams. Yeah. Okay, because it's not, um, it's not um, a traveller site where we can no. invoke our Section 61 powers on. Okay, and also just a quick one down that area, I've noticed a lot more now. Um, lots of groups of boys, and again, they're, they're going in the undergrowth. I'm not quite sure what they're doing. It's probably <laughs> drugs, <laughs> I'm assuming. But again, is that, do we contact you? Do we contact you, the community yeah, support? That, that you can just phone 101, phone the police, um, okay. and then that will come down to my team. We will then um, we will get we get somebody up to, to take a look. Yeah, there's a lot of children, you know, that yeah. walk down there and. Um, but like I said, just find 101. Just find 101. Go okay. 101, and then we, that will come straight back to my team to deal with. Okay. If it's about you got to wait three hours before you get a response. No, 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 no. I live in Moresby Court, and I back I look out on the back of the coals, right. and I can't see in there, but I can hear people in there at night time, and sometimes the language is pretty awful, and I think they are drunk. Um, is it 101 that I can ring for that? Ring 101 for, for anything that you've got any concerns about or any, <coughs> anything that, that you feel is not an emergency. So if you, if you think there's, there's, if you're a bit, bit scared or a bit, bit, well, um, scared. A bit, no, but you think something's going on in the middle of the evening, phone 101 yeah. up and then that will be reported. If it's something that's happening there and then and you feel actually it's in an emergency, I mean, we then have, you're in 999. Yeah, we have had the hand and sleeping back there. Yeah. I think that's all been removed. That's fine. Just, just report it through 101. Okay, okay. thank you. Um, if I can now introduce you to uh, Hayley Hamlet, who will give a speech 